Hey everybody, it's Harlan Kilstein here. And after a little bit of a problem, you know, they say when people have problems, they blame it on Mercury was in retrograde. Now, I have no idea. I, I don't know why people pick on poor Mercury. I don't know what Mercury ever did to them. But nonetheless, um, we did have a bunch of little tech problems the other night, so I decided to repeat the webinar to enable lots of people who aren't able to make it, to make it. And um, we are recording this webinar, and it is new material. I call it the amazing secret, and I dare say that by the time we get into the material, um, then um, by the time we get into the material, then uh, you'll think it's the amazing secret too. So if you were on the other night, um, you're going to hear maybe a little more details uh, about what's going on. Um, if you joined me the other night, you're welcome to um, listen, but we'll be getting with you as to when we're going to jump start. So um, let me check based on the other night and problems. How many people hear me clearly? Clearly, no crackling on the line. Okay, Gary hears me. Bill hears me very clear, no crackling at all. It must have been my microphone coming in good. Okay, and uh, a tiny echo. Uh, Ken, that happens when I talk to myself, and Kathy hears me. Okay, how about um, how about can you uh, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, I think I'm going to need to get a new set of headphones, but. For right now, we're going naked, no headphones. So don't tell anybody I said that. All right, we're going to jump into the amazing secret. So get ready, pay attention, because we're going to talk about some things that are, are pretty much going to blow you away. This is pretty exciting, and um, we spent a lot of time thinking about this. So let's go ahead and jump in. First, our disclaimer is that when you hear what's going on, when you hear people making money, um, I can't represent that this is going to happen to you. I know that lots of people have purchased programs from me and from others and never ever use them. In fact, I have people who email me after buying blog curation, like something like three or four years ago, saying, hey, Harlan, I bought blog curation three or four years ago. Can I start now? Well, you can start whenever. Um, the bottom line is, some people don't use things, so I can't make any claims. I just tell you what's possible. Okay, now years and years ago, we are talking in the late 1980s. I was a rabbi in a town so small that we are looking at the map and you cannot see the town. It's as if it doesn't exist. The town was maybe four blocks long, and there were two to three traffic lights, some stores, uh, the uh, Pennsylvania's equivalent of a 7-Eleven, which was called the Wawa store. You don't see too many of them around. And that was it. It was a really small town, and here I'm showing you the map, and it should be right here opposite Trenton, but we're we were too small to even make it to the map. Now, even though I was in a small community, small town, I, um, uh, even though I was in a small community in a small town, there was a very unusual member of my congregation. You see, she was the statistician for the SATs. You all remember uh, the nightmare of taking the SATs when you were in high school and how it determined where you were going to go in the future. Well, this woman was the statistician of the SATs, and she helped me with my doctoral dissertation because we had lots of uh, statistics on uh, my doctoral dissertation. And while we were doing those um, statistics, she would share with me information about the SATs. I would ask her questions, and I said, are the, um, are the SATs fair? to women. And she just looked at me and smiled. And she told me something that I never forgot. And it was, 
that on the SATs, if they asked either a math problem or a reading problem, and let's say it was about um, automobiles, they knew that women were going to do more poorly than men. If they took that same topic and they made it gender neutral, let's say about books in the library, and they asked the question, then women did as well as men. Now you would think, wouldn't you, that they would go out of their way to make the tests gender neutral. Unfortunately, that's not the way it happened. And I came away thinking at that time, the sad conclusion was that the cards were stacked against women. When it came to the SATs who were produced by the College Board Organization in Princeton, New Jersey, women basically didn't exist. Now, I've come to learn that for lots and lots of marketers, women don't exist either. Women are invisible. And there are countless stories about women walking into auto dealers and um, asking to um, see a particular car and they show them something in pink or uh, they say to them, um, I'd be happy to, um, to show you a car when your husband is here. They diss the women as if they're not even there. And to tell you the truth, not only is it insulting, and I don't know if anybody, I don't know if anybody here has had that experience. If you had, um, go ahead and type that in. But um, there, there was a period of time when a married couple uh, decisions on bank accounts and whatever, uh, they were required um, to have the husband there, the husband's signature. A wife could not decide to refinance a, a mortgage. And, and things like that are changing, but it wasn't that long ago. Now today, <coughs> marketers are seriously stupid uh, because the fact of the matter is that women are the predominant purchasers of everything. And I'm going to prove that in just a moment. And you're going to see some numbers and you're going to see some statistics that are just going to blow you away. So here's what I'd invite, like to invite you to do. I'd like you to reach down to your chairs and hold on to the bottoms of your chairs because what you're about to hear, what you're about to discover is going to blow you away. Don't say I didn't warn you. Women these days are the decision makers. In the areas of consumer goods, women are the ones who make the final decision. In small businesses, you'd be surprised, business, women, but in most small businesses, women are the decision makers. Even in corporate decisions, the women are the ones the women executives, the women financial people, they're the ones who are making the buying decisions. Women buy everything. They buy if there is a need for a family to have a health care policy. Chances are it's going to be the woman deciding. If a family needs insurance, whether it's life insurance or some other kind of insurance, uh, disability insurance, chances are it's the women doing the buying. Need to improve your home? Well, let's imagine this scenario. Can you, to paraphrase Mr. T, can you pity the fool who goes ahead and has a kitchen redone without having his wife or partner be the decision maker? Can you imagine what would happen to the woman who walks into the house and the husband says, oh, I redecorated the kitchen and got all new appliances. I didn't want to trouble you, honey, so I did it my way. Um, how quickly can you say, how quickly can you spell divorce, okay? Women are the decision makers. When it comes to investments, uh, once the bastion of men, now women are making the final decision on couples' futures and retirement funds. Women are buying computers and women are buying consumer electronics. Just about anything that you can uh, think of Women are the majority um, of the things that we see here. Typically, up to 88% of decisions, buying decisions, are made by women. 
Now, marketers typically aim their target at women age 18 to 45. And if you look at commercials, chances are you're going to see pretty young things going shopping, smiling, just had their hair done. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. That is a substantial part of the market. But the real money? Uh-uh. The greatest secret never told is because marketers have had their heads stuck in the ground for so long that sometimes they should really take them out and see daylight. Because, pay attention, the real market, the spending market in the world is 49 to 70. Now write those numbers down. 49 to 70. And the average woman's age is 49. Now, I'm not going to ask people um, who are on this call by name, so I'm not going to mention your name. But if you're on the call and you're female, type in your name. Type in your, not your name, type in your age. We won't, we won't call out your name. Just type in your age. 55, 52, 54, 56, 46, 59, 47, 43, 54, 72. Okay, so you see what I'm talking about here is that a lot of people are um, are saying, you know, people interested in internet marketing are young men. Uh, Frank Kern says that his avatar is a man, he called him Bob, who's 48 years old. I would suggest to Frank that he doesn't even know who's on his list because we're seeing that the numbers that are up here is that it's women 49 to 70 who are ruling the world. And, and one of them, honestly, is, uh, uh, one of them, honestly, is, and I, I'm not a political person, but one of them, honestly, is, is poised to possibly become president of the United States. So you get the idea that um, that this group of, of women has has power and has money. Now, when you market to these women, it's like shooting fish in a barrel. And the reason is that they have the money and they have the desire. And there are certain areas and certain products that not only are, are do they dominate, are 100% of the market, um, but they spend and they spend and they spend some more. Right before I got on this webinar, I was playing with Facebook's Audience Insight and I was asking um, things, um, I, I, I was asking questions and, uh, and Facebook told me that the market is 100% female. And that is really what we want to pay attention to, is to those markets that are 100% female. Now, there are three mistakes that marketers make. And these are terms that you never want to use with these women. The first is middle-aged. Women think that the term middle-aged means that they are dowdy, they are lumpy, or they are frumpy. They do not want to hear that they are middle-aged. They also don't want to hear that they are mature. Mature means someone who is serious, someone who is sober or proper, someone who is sedate. Translation, no fun. Our women want to have fun. Like Cindy Lopler said, girls just want to have fun. So middle-aged, that's out. Mature, that's out. And guess what else is out? Senior is out. They don't want to be called seniors. For seniors, they, um, they consider themselves, that would be if I were a, a doddering old lady, a tottering old lady. And, and they don't want to hear things about the golden years, okay? These are all terms that insult the marketplace. 
these are terms that nobody wants to hear about so I want you to pay attention to what this generation this generation of of baby boomers wants to be known as and the term that they resonate with more often than not is prime women prime women and this term comes from discussions with women and they say that period that we talked about from 49 to um, to 70 though the, that period of time was the prime of their life they consider it the best years of their life now prime women handle 80 to 85 percent of the spending decisions for their households they have the income they have the wealth and they have the spending power and when it comes to something they want uh, when it comes to something they want they make it happen and here you see just a, a woman sitting here she's got the gold jewelry she's got her ipad she's got um you know attractive clothes and she's living life on her terms and if she wants something she's going to go out and get it and she's not going to bother asking for permission now in some areas they have nearly 100 percent of the spending power and let's take a look at those areas number one jewelry okay i, I think we can understand why women in the prime years are the deciders behind jewelry a lot of people think that the jewelry market is the engagement ring market. I just want to tell you that that is a tiny, tiny fraction of the market. And the fact that some men are wearing jewelry, as, as they say in New York, uh, uh, speaking as a New Yorker, forget about it. The market is prime women. Cosmetics, again, the market for cosmetics is a hundred percent women just think of a department store and think of the cosmetic department women's cosmetics versus men's cosmetics women's cosmetics counters and counters and macy's near me go past not only the cosmetics and the creams and the powders and the blushes but also the perfumes and and on and on and on and they probably have about 20 cosmetic counters for men maybe they have one and there's a reason why because that's where the money is and the third market that we're looking at is essential oils women are the buyers of essential oil products now let's take a look at each of these industries and see what's going on let's look at the jewelry market okay now the jewelry market is really divided into three markets and please pay attention to the markets here number one and this is from um this is from the data that i'm sharing with you is from one of the biggest jewelry uh, manufacturing companies in the world so there is something that's called low end they this company known as pandora is considered to be um a low end um the it's the big it's one of the biggest parts of the market less than fifteen hundred dollars reason that i'm telling you this is because it is extremely easy to connect prime women and jewelry and get them to buy okay you can make money with prime women and low-end jewelry the middle part of the market is luxury from fifteen hundred to ten thousand dollars in jewelry and the high end of the market are pieces that above ten thousand but the market that we are looking at is not only low-end but is jewelry that is less than $100. We are finding, and I'm going to show you the data in a few moments, that 
it is one of the easiest sales that you can ever make. Here's some facts about the jewelry market that you might want to know. Number one, the jewelry market is currently at $232 billion. It's in a growth phase expected to reach $393 billion by um, 2020. Again, compare it to the dog market where some of us are, are making our money, and this dwarfs the dog market. Uh, online jewelry sales are the fastest growing segment of the market and it's coming at the expense of the department stores now i don't know whether you've had this experience but i've gone into department stores to buy jewelry and when i buy the jewelry i've learned to ask the question of is this going on sale and they'll say oh yes there's a fourth of july sale and it starts in two weeks and they'll say to me i'll say well can i get the sale price now and they'll say well i can give you the sale price now but you can't have the jewelry until the sale actually begins so you can go ahead and pay for it now at the lower price but you can't get it for two weeks how many people how many people here have had that experience right you want the lower price but you can't get your hands on it for two weeks and and people are saying Forget that. I'll just go online. I'll buy the jewelry and I'll have it tomorrow at a lower price and I don't have to play the games that the department stores are playing. And this is, and I can get the same uh, jewelry, possibly even cheaper. I won't even have to pay sales tax. And I certainly do not have to wait two weeks to get my jewelry. And that's why the fastest growing segment is online sales. The biggest losers are the department stores. They cannot keep up either in the selection and in the inventory. They cannot keep up with the um, with the demand. They can't have. They don't have room uh, for inventory. is very expensive. Now, a lot of the biggest players in the industry are learning the power of the being online. Um, seniors aren't the only ones, of course, buying jewelry. Uh, the prime women, number one, Pandora. How many people have seen Pandora Charms? Okay, Pandora Charms. Pandora, I believe, um, in 2014, their reported sales were $16 billion. Pandora Charms are sold mostly in Pandora stores, sold in malls, sold on cruises, and they are little charms, silver, um, rose gold, and um, those are the basic things. Charms can sell for as little as $26 um, and can sell for hundreds of dollars. Uh, Pandora charms are worn on a bracelet, typically, People will alternate charms and special beads that are called Venetian glass beads. And what Pandora does, it's all about customization. People, uh, I went and, to a Pandora store and I was there with my daughter and they explained to me that your charm represents your personality. And so, um, my daughter got a, I got her a bracelet because I was learning about this market. And on the bracelet was a dog because she had, we have Kalba who, uh, no, it's not time for a T-R-E-A-T. -E uh, we, we, because we have a dog and we got her a little glass bead and we got her, uh, for her to personalize it. She said, Oh, you have a charm with figure skates on it and of course they did so she has three little charms on her bracelet and she loves it and she went into school and everybody said oh pandora and everybody knew what it was now one of the most amazing things happened to me while i was in the store and i'm looking around i'm totally new to the market i'm learning the market for myself and a girl comes in and she says 
I think I need to get another charm to complete my set. And I realize that getting a charm bracelet for this generation is like an addiction. It's like collecting Beanie Babies. They have to have them all. So Pandora puts out limited editions. Pandora puts out um, Disney uh, charms, hockey charms, football charms, basketball charms, on and on and on. They've paid the licensing fees. And let me tell you, there's a lot of money in this. Honestly, a lot of money. Alex and Ani. Now, Alex and Ani is also in this charms market. Uh, maybe a little bit younger in age. The Alex and Ani market starts at about 18, gets big. We're talking about hundreds of millions of dollars. Not quite as big as Pandora. They're newer. And their charms are much less expensive. Uh, they came up with a new idea for a bracelet, which was a one-size-fits-all bracelet, interlocking ends so that you could shape it to any wrist. Alex and Ani charms and bracelets typically sell for in the $20 to $40. Relatively new brand, enough to make 200 or a million or so um, in the, the past couple of years. Some serious money. It's very hot. That play is that company is going to go a long way. And there's competition. Troll beads, Novo beads. There's even a company called Hobbit beads. These companies sell billions of dollars of charms to younger women. And the main thing about these charms is they are fun and they are addictive. Nobody buys just one. Okay. When you have one, you feel like, oh, I need to do this. And you are encouraged. If you talk to the people in Pandora, you are encouraged to make the bracelet your own style. And it's the same thing with Alex and Ani. They're tapping into like the spiritual market. So they have all kinds of charms that help you, give you powers and um, uh, spiritual things, meditation, peace. Uh, the, the number one selling charm for Pandora is probably uh, a very simple cross. And the number one selling charm for Alex and Ani is probably a peace sign. Okay. So the market, enormous. From 18 and up, it's all women. And they just buy and buy again. Now I want to introduce you to the cosmetics market. Facts about the cosmetics market. It's currently valued at $265 billion with a B. Now, if you include personal care products like deodorants, um, et cetera, shampoos, it's at $630 billion. We're talking about some serious money here. Now, the U.S. market alone is over $62 billion. An online market is surging, absolutely surging. You see, up until recently, the market was dominated by six major companies. They are now losing the market share to small, tight companies. In the past, when women would buy uh, cosmetics, they would look for a brand. They would look for a brand name. Then it came out that there were all kinds of, of, of uh, there were all kinds of, of ingredients that weren't so good for people in this. So the reason that I'm telling you this is because the most significant thing that is happening on the market is that the major companies are losing their market share to um, to smaller uh, startups, and um, and it's anybody's game now. This means that uh, people like you, people like me, we can get into this market and really clean up because it's just so easy to get in. Plus, to tell you the truth, uh, we're paying attention to the prime women 
which is where the money is at, and they're still paying attention at the other end of the scale when the prime women are ready to spend much more. Now, skin care is 35.3% of the market. Facial skin care is 27% of the market. And I want you to know something, and this may, it may be a little bit hard to believe, but the biggest part of the market is prime women from 65 and up, okay? Prime women from 65 and up, they are the biggest people for facial skin care. Now, now my friend Jim and I um, have been in the market of, of selling to women for a long time, and we see mistakes happening. I, I was on the phone with Jim this morning, and I asked him a question back on our based on our old days, and I said, uh, Jim, when you have prime women, do they want to see, you know, in cosmetics, do they want to see little 18-year-olds in bikinis? And the answer that he said was, absolutely not. And I said, okay, what do they want to see? And he said, the formula of what they want to see is to subtract 30 years from their age. So appropriate models for this market would be approximately 40 years old. And so in other words, nobody believes that um, they're going to look like a, a teenager again. Um, but they do believe with the right products that they can look entirely different. And the market is now going, now that we know that it's open. I want to show you the biggest area of this market. I'm giving this away. The biggest trend is all natural and organic products. And people are going into stores and buying cosmetics. They're buying cosmetics in Whole Foods. They're buying cosmetics online. They want that natural. They want the organic. They don't want to hear about the dangerous chemicals that some companies are using and putting in formulas. And so if you can keep this information in your mind, you can understand how easy it is to come into this market and really um, uh, start earning money with it. Now, the essential oil market is really a it's been around for a long time but because of the prime women market it is now exploding it's currently the essential oil aromatherapy market is currently at a billion dollars the desire to be all natural has exploded this market in the last five years this market is expected to grow even more because people want to use these wholesome uh, no side effects remedies for just about everything under the sun. Now get this. The top four players in the market only account for 6.3% of the sales. That means the market is wide open. And it's wide open for someone like you to go into it and take a chunk Essential oils are now being used to treat various skin and health issues in a simple, natural fashion. Whether it's moisturizing, whether it's treating anything from some kind of uh, tummy ache, um, um, whether it you know they have a uh, a skin condition um, and uh, they won't don't want to put any chemicals on it, they'll be putting. Things like um, um, like oregano oil, they'll dilute it because it's very, very powerful. And they are ready and looking for someone to show them what to do. All natural remedies, the market has never been more ready for someone to come in and show people what to do. Now, I was a partner in a business where we made our own essential oil blends. I actually got lessons um, in from 
someone who was a top perfume maker. And I learned about terms of notes and highs and lows. And I have to tell you that sitting in my kitchen um, with some uh, a couple of bottles, a couple of expensive funnels, and a couple of very low-priced oils, we were mixing up formulas that people would literally grab out of our hands and take and use. I remember one day um, we were mixing up a, a, a perfume. Uh, we were mi mixing up an essential oil blend. And my daughter came in and you know, I said, hey, what do you think of this? And she said, great. Hey, can I take this home? And the answer was obviously yes. Uh, my partner made some of um, mixtures. She added some citrus oil to a what we call a carrier. And when she took it to school, her kids were absolutely like um, they had these things to inhale to keep them focused during the day. And they came home at the end of the day every day and they were gone. And she said, what happened to it? And she said, Oh, so, and they would take money out. Somebody gave me $20 for it. And someone said, yeah, and I have orders for tomorrow. Can you go make more? And the funny thing is, like, I was like, oh, my God, like, they're selling in school. And then the mothers contacted her and said, can I get these for my other kids? It's really working. It's helping the kids focus. And I know that there's nothing wrong with it. It's all natural. And so <laughs> her kids were actually um, – doing uh, things like this. Um, and these things are, you know, I, I tell the story about uh, Kalba uh, when she was a little puppy and um, uh, I fed her eggs. I'll never make that mistake again. Kalba cleared the room. I mean, it was, uh, I'm in one end of the office and Sandra's at the other end of the office and neither of us could stay in the room. Little Kalba, she was a little puppy, totally cleared the room like, okay, eggs and Kalba do not agree. And what we ended up doing for Kalba was burning some aromatherapy candles and they made her feel better in, in just like a couple of hours of it burning. Of course, we had to, you know, it took a couple of hours until we take the clothespins off our nose, but we now knew not to do anything with Kalba. By the way, I bought the candles. Those were called dog fart candles. The name of the company was Sniff. Sniff. And I met the woman uh, who was, uh, her name was Jen. And within a year of Jen starting Sniff Pet Candles, she was bought out by another company and retired at like the ripe old age of 35 or so. So there's a heck of a lot of money here. And if you, all it takes is an idea and you are off and running. Now, for my entire life, I've been selling to the female market. We're looking here at the school that I built in Boca Raton, Florida. Um, this was a school. And when it came to deciding who was going to pick out the school? Um, it wasn't the um, it wasn't the husbands making the decisions. Um, it was um, it was the wives. Um, the wives were the ones making the decision, and so I had to absolutely learn how to sell to women. Well, when when my time in education was over, um, I actually met my friend Jim, and Jim. Um, uh, and I both opened up weight loss clinics. Jim had three clinics in Western Canada and sold millions and millions of dollars of, of programs. And um, Jim saw hundreds of people in his offices on a daily basis. And I had a much, I had two offices in Florida. Um, sold about $1.6 million worth of weight loss and hypnosis programs to women. I would say that 98% uh, percent of our clientele was women. And these women would spend thousands of dollars for weight loss programs. So the bottom line here is, um, can you sell to women? Heck yeah. Now, we get to the Doggington Post. 
The Doggington Post, of course, you know, if you ask me, the market is women. And the market for women, if you talk to anybody in the industry, everyone knows that it's women typically age 40 and up. They don't consider their dogs dogs. They consider it their children. I was recently invited to spend a day with Dan Kennedy. And Dan Kennedy saw the Doggington Post and he was like, oh my God, my wife would never leave this site. Um, and his wife is, of course, a prime woman who spends whatever she wants on her dog. And we've discovered that the Doggington Post, which we've been running for a couple of years, actually became a powerful lever um, for several other businesses. Now, I've turned down seven-figure offers for the Doggington Post so far. I'm waiting for the numbers to go up. But in the meantime, we've discovered, and I'll share it with you, my business model is we have Facebook. We send people Facebook to the website. We combine it with email and we sell things. And every time, I know, we have the math down. This is now down to a science. Every time we send out an email, we make mega sales. Every time we send out an email, no matter what it is, people buy. Whether we recommend a, a, a different product as an affiliate, whether we um, uh, do it um, in any other way, this is the formula. It's the, the trifecta of money. Facebook, website, email, ka -ching. That's the business model. Now, on Facebook, we build our fan base. We build trust. We send traffic to our website. We make lots of organic sales. And we also make um, dollars on Facebook ad sales. The key element here that I want to point out is trust. A lot of people just run right into selling without trust. When you combine trust and sales, the cash register goes off. On the website, we give valuable content. We build more trust. We've built our brand. We're building an email list. We make money from ad sales. We make money from sponsorship. We make money from product sales. And the money is so good now that um, we just hired a second advertising manager to take us really to the next level. The business mo model, emails, we deliver valuable content, uh, build trust and brand, we send traffic to the site, we make product sales, sponsored sales, affiliate sales. Here you're looking at a piece of jewelry that we just sent out an email about, and the email brought in literally a couple of thousand dollars in sales. So what you have is that these all work together. Facebook, website, email, boom. All three create customers, all three create sales, and you have a, an endless stream of customers coming to you, joining you, wanting to be part of you, and wanting to be part of something. So in the last week of April, I launched something called Purely Possum Jewelry. And you're looking at just a couple of the pieces. Now, we've discovered that the story about the jewelry is what sells. So, for example, the piece on the top that you see in a couple of different photos, that's called, again, I named it, it's really supposed to be um, supporting dog adoption or dog rescue. I changed the name and we call it Save a Soul. And we tell people that when you um, 
rescue a dog, you're really saving a soul. It has become one of our most popular pieces, and uh, we can't get enough of them. We've had to order and reorder and order more. Down at the bottom right, you don't see the whole piece, but it's a sterling silver heart, which has also has a paw print attached to it. People love dog jewelry. People can't get enough of dog jewelry. We've ordered so many uh, pieces of, of dog jewelry. Now we're actually going and manufacturing our own, um, uh, we're manufacturing our own, um, our own jewelry, both in Thailand, where Pandora is made, and in China. And this is going to allow for increased sales. Take a look at this number, okay? Now, this is not, does not include the last two days because we've gone up by a couple of thousand. But as of Tuesday to June 30th, from the last week of April, we've done 43,133.35. Who thinks that that's a pretty good way to start up a new business? Tell me what you think. Just one person? Not bad at all. Wow, awesome, not too shabby, sweet. Okay. Excellent. I want a pie of those. Okay, well, let me ask you a question. Fantastic, mind blowing. Well, you see, first of all, number one is, as I wrote about in the email today, I'm not telling you I made a million dollars standing on my foot in five minutes while frying tomatoes on my stove. This is a real number, it came right out of the shopping cart. That's a copy of the shopping cart um, with what we did, and now it's um, over 44,000 um, in, in just two days. We're making something like in between 750 and $1,000 a day. However, in the Christmas season, it's going to go up even more. It's going to go up even more because people are in the mode for buying. When I spoke to a business consultant about it, she said, whatever your numbers are, whatever your numbers are, the um, you will do 70% of your year's sales in November and December. So if we're doing this and you see we were a little higher in um in may because of mother's day but sales have picked up because of the fourth of july and it doesn't include it but i i saw before that today's sales and tomorrow's sales today's sales were about eight hundred dollars tomorrow's sales i expect to be between eight and twelve hundred dollars and then all through the fourth of july weekend because americans love an excuse to buy. Americans love an excuse to buy. And that's what we're giving them the opportunity of doing. Now we're creating our own designs to sell. This one has got the dog in a heart and with like an American flag, um, the stars and the stripes in the background. This one down at the bottom is called the circle of life. And we know that these will sell, we're going to sell way more. So I want to do some math with you. Selling products to women, to prime women, aged 49 plus, jewelry, skincare, essential oils, plus Facebook that encourages selling with demographic data so we can actually pick out prime women and sell to them, equals massive income. Now, how many people, how many people like that kind of math? How many people think, yeah, you can do that? Okay, this is what we're doing. Now, I'm going to show you another secret. If we could turn back time, I built the Doggington Post a number of years ago, and 
I built it to be the premier site about dogs just a few years ago. Now, I remember when I started out, and some of you on the call may remember when I started out, it was a nothing. It, it had no traffic. I remember uh, watching the site go, grow and emailing my list to try and get some likes, and we had like 200 likes, and like, oh my God, it's only got 200 likes. I'm never going to go anywhere. And I remember walking to my first dog show a month after it started, and I said, yeah, it's a new site, but it's going to be the top dog site on the Internet. And people just looked at me and like, said, yeah, sure it is. Come back and tell us about it. Six months later, um, a bunch of people have had heard about us. Um, a year later, uh, most people had heard about us. Now I walk into um, uh, different places and the, the, the Doggington Post, I was in my vet's office. And there was a poster um, that came straight out of the Doggington Post and it was on the vet's wall. And I said, oh, um, you have a cool poster there. He goes, yeah, um, lots of good information, that poster. You should study it. I said, uh, where would the information come from? He goes, oh, it's from this website called the Doggington Post. I said, well, I own it. I was like, get out of town. You do not own the Doggington Post. I pulled out my business card. I showed it to him. He shook his head. I read it every day, and it has become the premier site. Now, I know every mistake I made. Now, I want you, and I'm serious here, to be my partner in, um, uh, to be my partner in this. And I see my friend Darlene, um, who is on the call, and, and Darlene has been really, um, you love this? I love the essential oils, the skin care, and the jewelry. Okay, so she says this is right on target. I want you to be my partner in a new site. Watch this. We're going to do new math. We're going to dominate selling to prime women. Now, if I asked you, okay, if I asked you um, years ago, did you think I would be the number one site? People, you know, like they would humor me. Maybe yes, maybe no. But once I've done it, how many people think that I could do it again in a different market? You think it's possible? You think it's possible that you know, people are going, hell yes, sure. Okay. It's a duplication because we already know the steps. And if you become my partner, you will have the power of our super site behind you. And we can make this puppy turn off. Now, last night, I want to tell you a story. Last night, um, I, I, I accidentally left my computer on, and someone sent me a Facebook message at 2.30 in the morning. It was a woman who is actually um, the the partner girlfriend of a huge huge marketer you would 99% of you would recognize the name if I said it he's he's probably the number one net recognized name in all natural medicine and cures okay you probably know the name I just don't want to mention it and she got into a problem with Facebook and I ended up calling her and she was deathly afraid that she was going to lose her her page that had 36,000 likes and I said to her over the, the phone, you know, if you lose that page, um, I could rebuild it and get you those 36,000 likes in a month. And she thought I was kidding. And she said, well, you know, 36,000 is a lot. I said, would you like to see my pages? And I showed her two pages and she called me back to say that not only my information worked and, and saved her, but but she was intrigued that I would make a claim. And after she saw my pages, she said, I guess you know a little bit about Facebook. So we are going to build this super site. And instead of taking off slowly, we're going to go quickly. And you will be a featured columnist. We'll get to more about that shortly. Now here's a site that Jim has built. It's called Tips That Rock. And the idea here is talking to prime women 
especially, we're not going to exclude others, but um, in the areas of health, beauty, diet, pets, um, fun, and big stories. And let me tell you something, this is what people want to know about. So combining aromatherapy, organic sauerkraut, um, natural remedies to treat sideburn, in a relatively short period of time, tips that rock is going to explode. Now, my idea is that you guys will be contributing articles to tips that rock. You will be like the original people who were the bloggers for the Huffington, Huffington Post. And, um, and Steve figured out who the person was. So the, um, those people who were the original bloggers all have huge followings on their own blogs because they use the Huffington Post as to propel themselves forward at lightning speed. And that's what I propose to do here with you as my partners. Now, I'm already paying big affiliate money. Every month, on the first of the month, I pay thousands of dollars in affiliate fees to my members. And it goes out like clockwork. People sell and they make money. So, I provide the products, you sell them and make money. This way, it's easy and it's done for you, okay? And people who know me know that the affiliates come first. Now, let me show you an example. Uh, these are the DVD sales. The affiliates are we're coming out with a new DVD. It's called The Secret Language of Barking. It's just being printed right now. And I'm not even ready to sell them yet but my affiliates are going to get to sell them. The DVD is going to sell um, the, for $29.95. We've priced it. We compared with what's on Amazon. And um, uh, my math is actually wrong. I actually make about $3 per, per um, DVD. Um, and I, 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 pay, um, um, I pay about 2 to... to $2 plus shipping, the affiliates make $26.95. So who has that sweet deal, okay? Who has the sweet deal? The affiliates get the sweet deal because they get to keep the overwhelming majority of the money. And uh, incidentally, if you were to go to Amazon and say, okay, I want some DVDs that will... Um, that will teach me how to get my dog to stop barking, none exist. We went into the market after really surveying the market and finding out that there are dozens and dozens of DVDs that will uh, teach you how to house train a puppy, but if your dog has a problem, not a single one in existence. So bottom line, folks, is... Um, my, my affiliates started ordering them today, um, and they're buying them and they're going to be making the bulk of the money. And that's really what I see myself as, you know, like I'm doing okay. Um, I want to serve and I want, so I'll make the $3, you make more of the money and nothing makes me happier than that. And, and we have some really top talent here, Babette Haggerty, who is arguably one of the top dog trainers in the world, her father, Captain Haggerty, uh, the New York Times said, uh, established dog training in the United States. So um, that's what I'm doing for affiliates. We like good uh, when affiliates win the money. Now, I'm creating an entire line of jewelry designed to appeal to prime women. I'm going to start with that first. Then we're going to go with a younger line. But First, we want to appeal to the prime women. We're going to start with a skincare line, a facial cream, that's designed to appeal to this market. And it's going to be all natural and organic. I'd like you to be the affiliates and make serious money. 
How are you going to get the traffic? Well, you're going to get the traffic from Facebook, and you're also going to get the traffic coming from Tips That Rock going to your site. Together, we'll create essential oil products that people will literally grab out of your hands. For example, those citrus oil inhalers providing relief for ADHD. And the interesting thing is, there are no regulations whatsoever um, about this. Um, you can create a product. We'll go over the recipes for you. I have to tell you, internet marketing was never, um, I, I've never seen uh, products that, um, that were just as much fun to make. Internet marketing has never been as fun as it is mixing up essential oils. Really fun. Aromatherapy candles for every mood. Um, and and th this will be combining them. A, a huge amount of fun and people loving this stuff. We will build you a WordPress website. We'll make you an affiliate for all of the product. And this is a closed affiliate program. And the reason is that the larger the affiliate programs there are, what happens is that um, it becomes competitive. People are fighting over one another. But we keep our groups tight, and we've never had in our dog affiliate, we've never had a case of people stepping on anyone else's toes. As a matter of fact, as big as, as we are, I've never seen anyone else's ads. Okay? So it's a closed affiliate program. We will write the sales copy for you. Um, and we're working towards, get this, this is big. We are working towards something that's called adaptive payments. This is with PayPal. It means that you get paid affiliate commissions immediately. Okay? You make a sale and boom. It's, the money is in your PayPal account. So the bottom line here is um, this is where we're going with this. So if you've spent money on advertising, make a sale, boom, you got the money back as soon as the sale is made. So selling to Venus, which is the name of the new program, is something that's immensely doable. Um, it's the first marketing program, internet marketing program, that's really aimed at selling to Venus, to, to, to these women who have the money. Uh, setting up the Facebook page, is where we're going to start studying the market, essential oils, jewelry sales, cosmetic sales. Now, I reserve the right to move things around here and, and get to things a little bit sooner um, to get you going, give you more things to do. But this is the first program that is just designed to be a whole lot of fun as well as making you money. Plus, at the end of the program, during the winter, remember how bad the winter was in most of the United States, you are going to come and join me in Boca Raton, Florida, and we're going to spend time while the rest of the world is buried under snow and ice. You will be joining me with the money that you will have earned during this program. You will join me on the beach of Boca Raton in the, in the middle of winter, you will be down here in your short sleeves, shorts, and sandals, um, just enjoying time. And we talk, talk about taking your businesses to the next level. Here's what you get when you join me. You'll get our help setting up a targeted Facebook page. Listen, Facebook makes it possible to really target the buyers. And we'll show you exactly who the buyers are and get them on your page. You'll be on our Facebook group, membership in our Facebook group, outstanding. You'll get all recordings of the webinars right in the Facebook group. You'll be listening to some of the interviews with the top bloggers in the niche, okay? Um, this is outstanding where you will be um, on top of the industry. We want you to be the ones with the information. And, um, this is just absolutely fantastic. Um, we build you a WordPress site, okay? Uh, Glenn is going to build that for you, and um, it, it's just going to be um, 
amazing. Next, you get membership in our affiliate program. And you have to be, we have people approaching us and saying, hey, can I join? And the answer is unanimously, no, you can't join. Um, you have to be an insider. You'll get to sell our jewelry. You'll get to sell our facial skin cream. You'll get to sell your own essential oils. The expenses in setting that up are minimal, really minimal. Um, and also there are CPA offers in the beauty market that you can sell um, and, and people are buying them. Um, and then that winter meeting in sunny Boca Raton, Florida, where bad weather does not exist. Not in the winter. It's gorgeous here. So here are the payment options, and you can see where to go, and, and Glenna will put that in the bottom. There's a paid in full option of $3,000 that saves you the money. There's a three pay option, three payments of $1,200, and there's a six pay option where six payments of $700. But if you're a member of my six and six program, it is half price, it's just $1,500. Now I have to tell you, that I was blown away the other night. I was absolutely blown away the other night because when uh, we had so many problems on the webinar, but the people who joined are the people who are already in my six and six uh, program because they know a good opportunity. They're already making money online. And now they see the opportunity to go into a market that is thirsty for um, it is a buyer's market. They want to buy, they have the money, and we are sell, selling them exactly what they want. We're gonna build trust with them. We're going to entertain them. We're going to move them emotionally, and we're going to sell to them. Uh, now, did someone say bonuses? Yes. If you do paid in full, the first 10 people to join, I'll build your Facebook page, and buy you the first 500 likes with my own money. The second 10 to join, I'll build your page and buy you the first 250 likes. These are targeted likes, these are not fake likes. I'm not going out to any one of those companies that would endanger your page. I'm doing this myself. The third 10 to join, I'll build your page and buy you the first 100 likes. Uh, and plus, if you are in the first 30, we will mail your affiliate link because we're going to be building a huge email list. We will mail your affiliate link during the Christmas buying season. Can you think ka-ching? So go over right now to killstein.com selling hyphen uh, dash uh, to hyphen Venus and um, and go ahead and jump on board. If you have questions, I'm here to answer your questions, but I am want to get started next week so that you are making money by selling to Venus as, as fast as possible. All right, go ahead, jump in, make sure you're one of the first 10 um, if you can, and let's get underway. Um, what kind of questions do we have, Glenna? Uh, the first question we have is from Brandon. He's asking, won't we all be competing against each other on Facebook ads? And, and the answer is that the market is so big, and we already have this in the dog market. We, I've never seen another ad. Um, the market is so big. Um, it's kind of like um, I use the example very often of pouring buckets of sand out of the water and the water is still full. Uh, there is so much money in this market that uh, we could all compete and compete and compete and um, not never even see one another. It's like ships that um, are sailing the Atlantic Ocean and never see one another, okay? The opportunity is here. I encourage you to come into this with, uh, with the opportunity, with a positive mind, not thinking that, um, you know, this person is my competition. I want you to think that this person is my potential partner. Okay, and Lou asked, will this work in the U.S. only? No. Well, first of all, number one is this market is a worldwide market, okay? That's the truth. 
The second is no matter where you are in the world, you can sell in the um, U.S. market. Okay, um, absolutely, that anybody can do this. Okay, Jim has a good question. He says, I'm a male and have no clue about this market. How will we generate content for our website and Facebook pages? First of all, um, I understand the question. Now, you can't see me, but I have a beard, and I'm a man, and I'm making money in the jewelry market. And I did not know anything about jewelry. I didn't. Now, if you talk to me about the process of making jewelry, I could probably give you a very interesting discussion and talk about the process of, of jewelry and creating molds and whether it's stamped and enamels and materials and rhodium versus rose gold and so forth. We learn it and we prepare it and we digest it and we share it with you. So do you need to know about any of these things? Absolutely not. And as a matter of fact, be, if you don't know something about it, um, you come in as what they used to say in education, the ideal situation. You come in as the what they call the tabula rasa, the blank slate, so you don't have any prejudices at all. Okay. Uh, Kat says she just joined. Yeah. Do we only need to add our email at this stage? Say that again? She says, do we only need to add our email at this stage? Yes, and you will get an email. Um, you will get an email within the next 24 hours. Lou's asking, can I do this in Spanish for Spanish speakers in the U.S.? Oh, heck yeah. What a market. What a market. Yes. Yes, you can. Big time. The spe there, there are... There are a number of different Spanish markets, and the Spanish, the Hispanic market in the United States is got serious money associated with, and it is under-marketed to. Heck, yes, you can do that. Levon says, the website that you built for me, would it have all these different niches, or do I have to choose just one niche? It will have all of those different niches. Why make part of the money when you can make a lot of money? We'll show you exactly how to do it so that it's simple. And we've learned over the years that the best way to do it is to do the heavy lifting for you. Okay, and Lee's asking, what is the ongoing work that we affiliates should be doing? How many hours per week should we be working on this program? How many and how much are we spending on ads? Um, so, um, well, first of all, number one is the way most of the people start doing it is we start testing it with organic traffic without spending the money. We spend some money to build your Facebook page unless you're one of the first ten, and two of those places have gone already. Um, if you are um, one of the ten, um, uh, you know, I'll be I'll be building the page for the first 30, but I'll be getting the 500 likes. 500 likes, I would allow maybe 100 to 150 dollars to spend on likes. Um, I would again say maybe 100 dollars, and that's really on the high end for um, the essential oils. You're probably closer to 60 or 70 dollars um, to get started in that and start making money with that. Um, and we basically took, uh, if you want to hear about markup, every um, bottle of what we made in essential oil cost us ingredients, bottle, packaging, and everything about $4, and we sold it for 70 Who thinks that's a pretty good markup? $4 for 70 People think, yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, what other questions? Okay, Harry's asking, do we need to sell through Amazon or are we just selling through Facebook? 
we're going to sell through Facebook. And um, oh, excuse me, here comes a sneeze. <coughs> Bless you. Um, because the reason we're doing that is because Amazon has been really funny when it comes to essential oils. It allows some essential oils and doesn't allow others. Well, um, we're going to bypass all that and sell that on our own. As far as um, um, the the jewelry and and so forth, um, you'll do way better to um, do that. You certainly can put the jewelry um, that we'll be talking about on Amazon, but there would be some confusion. The best way to do this is to follow the business model. The business model that I showed you is the proven model. Facebook website and email that's the way I'm making the money now if you um, there there's a woman in in my community who is from Mexico and she makes the best guacamole I ever had and I said to her well how did you get to be so good at making it and she said well my mother gave me the recipe and she gave me the recipe and I told it to someone and they said well you know what? I don't want to use tomatillos. That's a special kind of a, a green tomato looking fruit. And I said, well, if you take out one of the elements, you're not doing, you're, you're not going to have the same recipe. So I want you to follow the recipe. Okay. Um, now it's, it's really very, very simple. Follow the recipe. How many hours per week? Well, I can tell you in the dog niche, that a lot of people, some of the most successful people, first of all, some of the most successful people outsource everything. They find people in the Philippines who will do the work for them. And, um, and there are people who are literally the most successful people in our dog um, program who work um, on one day a week and they schedule all of their Facebook posts for the week and away they go. So they work for a couple of hours on a Sunday afternoon or a Saturday afternoon. Facebook lets you set all that stuff up and that's it. Um, it's not an hour of, obviously in the beginning you're learning, um, learning the tricks of the trade, but after that, um, it's very, very simple. Very little time um, and plus it's, it's fun. Every single piece of this business can be done from your iPad or iPhone or smartphone. Other questions, Glenna? Um, Lou had asked, will you be hosting the website or do we need to host it? I want you to own the website. It's your business and you will own the website. You will own the domain name. Um, I did it the other way in the past. It was very confusing for people. It's your business. You should own it, not me. All right, and Jim says he has a beer too, so he's in. Okay, and I'm seeing um, we're we're filling up now with the the first ten. So if you want to get in on the first ten, um, you really are going to have to uh, um, have to hurry. And you know the thing that puts a smile on my face is seeing so many people who are prior customers. Who are joining again because they know that I over deliver and I want you to tell me I, I want you to know that my, my, my kids are, are in the house but he's got his headphones on so the truth of the matter is I should be screaming with how much fun this is with watching the numbers come in um, every day in the sales of jewelry and there are people selling thousands thousands of dollars of jewelry every month. I, you've probably heard of our uh, our famous vet. Um, his name is Chris Smith. Chris retired last year and has been selling t-shirts, um, selling anywhere from a thousand to two thousand dollars a day in t-shirts. And now he's selling jewelry. And I asked him, which is easier? And he just goes, uh, jewelry, 
you said it and forget it and he's just amazed he's hardly even trying we work at constantly testing and improving our conversions and we have the jewelry we are very very careful about what we buy and we take every piece of jewelry and we we show it to a team of people and if the team of people doesn't agree on that piece of jewelry then uh, we don't go ahead with it okay um, and and there's a lot there's jewelry there that makes my head spin um, they sent us a picture of a uh, they sent us a piece of jewelry of a Labrador retriever and there was a duck in the middle of it and I said what in the world is there a duck in the middle of this thing and they said well some people um, take their retrievers hunting and I, I said that this is not my market. You know, I, I don't want ducks or, or other furry. One, one, one had a badger in it. Um, honestly, we know what sells. And we have four pieces of jewelry selling. And four out of four are, are hitting home runs. I have to tell you that I'm the one laying out the money on the inventory. And uh, we have... We have stock in it. Um, we have hundreds of pieces here. The orders come in. They go out the same day, and, um, and people are thrilled. The other day, uh, we had a discussion with PayPal about the, the business, and they asked what the return rate was. And I said, we've sold thousands of people, uh, thousands of pieces of jewelry, and there have been four returns, at which point Sandra corrects me and says, no, Harlan, there have been two returns. Now, this is the kind of business that PayPal likes. Like, nobody returns this stuff. They fall in love with it. When we post, uh, on the, just to give you an example, on the Doggington post about the jewelry, um, people rave about it. Uh, they say, oh, I have this, and it's gorgeous. And all my friends, you, you, people say, you should buy this. It's really good. So this is something that, um, that that's a really good thing. Okay, Gary had also asked, uh, how much training is provided and is it ongoing? Oh, heck yeah, it's ongoing. You, the people who have been in 6 and 6 know that um, it's ongoing training. Every time uh, Facebook does something, um, we're there. We update people. We keep you on target. We want your success. Your success is our success. And I think it's YK is asking from scratch, when can we start selling? Um... I would say within three to four weeks, you should be able to sell and make money. Okay, and Vicki's saying that she'd be interested in learning how to hire folks to um, help her do some of the work. Just ask, and we'll show you how to hire a VA for very little. They will do the work for you. Okay, and I think we pretty much got through the questions about the program. Okay, let me just show you what you get again. Oops. Help setting up a targeted Facebook page, membership in our Facebook group, all recordings of webinars, interviews with the top bloggers, we build you the WordPress site, membership in our affiliate program, sell our jewelry, sell our facial cream, sell your own essential oils, um, CPA in the beauty market, which is huge, absolutely huge, winter meeting in sunny Boca Raton. Also, being a columnist, contribute as often as you like to Tips That Rock. We'll show you how to curate, and for even a bigger bang, uh, you can turn your blog also into a curation site We'll show you what works. 
I have on a every single day that goes by, I have emails. Um, here's one that came in today. Hello, thank you for getting in touch. Um, here's a guy who's a veterinary behaviorist from the UK. Um, he has 20,000 likes and he would like to work with the Doggington Post. Um, here's someone who uh, is a company from Rumble. They would like to team up with the Doggington Post. Here's one that came in today. I write for the New York Times and Funny Times. My work appears in the Funny Times, New York Times, Huffington Post, the Jewish Forward, and the Christian Science Monitor. Would you like to use, can I write, for, can I write to you for free? Um, every, every single day we get dozens and dozens of people saying, hey, can we work with you? And I'd like to be able to pass this on to you. So you literally become my partner in this. I believe in sharing. I believe in giving the affiliates a fantastic shot at it. And I would like you to be one of the people who are the winners. If this is the kind of thing that appeals to you, then I want to see you on the inside. Are there any more questions? I'll stay here until the questions are answered. Um, Vicki was asking about the UNUP cell for the 6 and 6 program. Okay. What is that for? Um, that has nothing to do with this. Okay. Okay, and YK is asking, even with the pay plan, you'll build the site for us? Absolutely. Absolutely. Why not? Okay, and I think that's all the questions. Okay. Well, I'd like to thank you for joining me. We will be sending out um, a replay if you want to hear this again. Um, this is really something that you should get on to. You know what? Go ahead. Write down the URL. Write down the URL, killstein.com forward slash selling hyphen to hyphen uh, Venus. And, and do look, check out my numbers. Check out my numbers and see if I'm exaggerating or not. You look at the numbers of how much uh, money Pandora made last last in 2014. Okay, um, Google it. Go to Wikipedia. Put in the names of the companies. You'll see. You'll be blown away. And then come back. Um, you know there are a lot of people that don't tell the truth on on the internet. Well, I show you things that are reality. Yeah, I could have said that I made a hundred thousand in the past couple of weeks, but that wouldn't be true. And I have to live with myself. I want your success, and that's why we bend over backwards to make our affiliate success is more important than our success. I have the Doggy Post. Doggy Post is doing very well, thank you. I have other products doing very well, thank you. I have my coaching business. I have my copywriting business. I have all of these things, but it, I'm at the stage now where I care about surf serving others and in serving others we in turn will serve you so um, come aboard and we look forward to to having you and let's rock this thing um, I'll be here um, in the group um, Jim will be in the group Glenna will be in the group she'll be building your sites and this will rock. But you want to get in now. Um, people come and say, oh, you know, I have to catch up. Don't be catch up. Don't play catch up. Come in with us and build this spectacular business together. This will be a business that will be there for your future. And I'm telling you that so many people who are already in 6 and 6 are, are coming aboard. And it's gratifying because they know that 
I over deliver and that anything I said today, you know, I never promised um, the jewelry program would be part of 66 of six and six. I added it because it was good for our um, affiliates. And that's what it's all about. So folks, come on in. The water's fine. It's safe. It's protective. And especially um, the people who told me that this makes sense to them. I want to hear from you. I want to hear from you why you would not take advantage of a situation like this. Tell me, um, this is, um, whatever, someone wants to, could someone in Australia do this? Absolutely. Um, what shopping cart are we using? Um, well, we'll, we're, we'll be using probably Nanocast, um, and, um, but we recommend that you, for the zero cost, uh, use PayPal, Harry. Um, other questions? All right. Um, great. I'm so glad you're here. And um, I'm so glad. I hope it made sense to you. Uh, this is something that is, is absolutely something that, that you can do. And um, my friend in um, Phoenix, who is still on, um, looking at you and saying, hey, what's going on? I don't see you come in. Get in here. It's great. The water's great. And I'm, I'm probably going to give you a call. So um, everybody, be, be, uh, be well. You'll be hosting the website, Carol. I want you to own the website. I want you to own the hosting. Okay? It's a very incidental cost. Um, 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 does the Facebook page only go to people you're friends with? No, not at all, Joe. Um, you can operate this business and, and Facebook uh, and your friends won't even know that you have it. Um, my friend who just messaged me, um, I think you still have my number. When we're all done, I want you to give me a call. All right. Um, let's wrap it up for a night. Um, Kilstein.com, selling to Venus, selling hyphen to Venus. Come on aboard. This is going to be um, one of the best programs ever. Thanks so much for joining me. Thanks for giving me your time and your attention. I want to wish you all a really happy 4th of July because some of you took a first step towards independence tonight, and I hope you all will. Thanks so much, everybody. Bye-bye.